Hey, what up everyone? This is Mondo Day back with another video. And in this video, I'll be going over my build guide for Human Torch. I'll be going over which artifacts I use, which uniques I use, and which medallion, as well as go over the power points where I placed them, the omegas, and then hero synergies. And at the very end, kind of go over my build guide for Human Torch. Uh, again, I use roughly around 3,000 omegas. I believe I use like 3,400 or so. I'm not too sure, to be completely honest with you. But again, this is my build guide for Human Torch, and yeah, let's get into it. So the first thing we look at is his, un his artifacts. The first artifact is Lizard's Formula. I use this for the damage rating, then attack speed increase, but more importantly, for the when you critical hit, you gain you regenerate 100 health and one and five spirit. That's important because um, uh, Human Torch is a bit weak. He's a bit fragile, and he's very spirit dependent. So this this artifact, you know, when you critical hit, and you gain that. You when you recover that five spirit and one health, it does help out a little bit. So keep that in mind. I'm using our our Nims Zola ESP box. I'm using this for the damage rating increase, critical rate, critical hit rating, but more importantly, gain three point five spirit when you hit with a damage over time power. Okay, again, he's very spirit dependent, so you want to keep regenerating um, that spirit. Then I'm using Scroll Avengers Medallion. I'm using this for the plus one fighting, the attack speed, and health, but mainly for when you when you use a melee power, you gain melee, melee damage increase, and when you hit with a range power, you gain range damage increase. But more importantly, when you activate both uh, both effects, you gain plus two fighting. So that's very good. Then I'm using Kevlar's Plated Helmet. I'm using this for the deflect rating and critical rate rating to range attacks. But also two, when you critically hit, you gain plus three fighting for two. And then I'm using the book of demonic demonicas, and I've said this before, probably one of the best artifacts they've had so far. I'm using this for the plus three to all attributes. It's very very useful for him, so keep that in mind. Now for the uniques, I use all of his uniques, as you can see here. But I will advise though, I did get him blessed um, because he's a bit weak. Slots two, three, and four I have it to where I, I get a blessing of defense rating increase. And again, I really let you, whether be honest and, let, and inform you guys, I chose that because he's a bit weak and having the extra defense rating increase does help out. It might not help a whole lot, but any little thing, any little help can make a difference. So, again, I'm just showing you, letting you guys know. And then for the ring, I'm using the industrial City Ring. Um, when you critical hit, you gain energy um, increase to energy attacks, attack speed is increased to energy powers, and then the health as well, too. And critical damage rating. For the costume, grade one through four, critical damage rating as always. And for the core, I have it to re regenerate 25% of my health and 100 spirit when using med kit, plus one energy and plus one speed. For insignia, I'm using insignia and wasps. I'm using this for when you hit with a range power, you and your allies gain critical hit rating with range powers and critical damage rating increase, which is really, really good. And also this grants me brutal damage rating and health. For the pet, I have it to where I gain 4% base health and plus 3 energy. So this pet is not even fully maxed out. Uh, keep that in mind. Forged, I'm using this for uh, 800 defense. It's 800 defense and I have it blessed to where I gain 200 damage increase range and energy powers. And then legendary, I'm using the cosmic control rod for the de energy damage increase, but also for the plus 2 energy. Now for the power points. Scattering Blaze, max that out. Scorching Power, max that out. Thermal Intensity, max that out. Signature, always want to max out. Fuel of the Flame, max it out. Fury Rejuvenation, not in there. Scorching Wall, max it out. Homing Flares, four. Fury Uppercut, max that out. Blazing Speed, ten there. And then Cleansing Fire, one there. For the Omegas, again, around 3,000 Omegas or so, as you can see here. Uh, let's get right into it. And there's Stellar Exploration, one for Earth for the base damage increase, one for Eagle the, Eagle the Living Planet for the plus one durability, speed, and energy, one for Nowhere for 1% chance to call in Star Lord's ship. Special weapons. Uh, Two to tag rounds for when you hit with the range power, you can critical hit rating and critical damage rating. And also two assault rifle for the base damage range powers. 
one for Fury's Needle Gun for the attack speed increase and spirit cost reduction to range powers. As I mentioned, he is spirit dependent, so that helps. Plus one to Sunfire for the energy damage increase. Three to Warpath for the fighting. And then Frenzy, one there for when you critically hit or when you when you hit with the when you hit with the melee power you gain critical damage rating, excuse me. Two to eight bomb to A bomb for when you use a melee power, there's a chance you can become chameleon and turn invisible. Nano technology five to spin tech for the damage rating to bosses. Psionics five there to melt face for the brutal damage rating. Molecular adjustment three to antigenesis for the plus three energy defect rating and mental defense. And then exogenesis. 3 there for the plus 3% energy base energy damage, energy defense rating, and then regenerate 6 health when you have energy power. And that should be all. Hero synergies. Cable for the critical hit rating. Captain Marvel for the energy damage increase. Green Goblin for the area damage and move speed increase. Hawkeye for the move speed and critical damage. Human Torch for the area damage increase. Iron Man for the range and energy damage increase. Rogue for the health on any hit. And one spirit on any hit. Star Lord for the critical hit rating to. I'm sorry. Critical rating to energy powers. War Machine for the plus 10 spirit. Plus one fighting. And then Wolverine for the brutal strike and brutal damage rating. You can't replace some, some of these for something else. You can maybe replace Green Goblin or Human Tor for possibly. Nightcrawler for the melee damage increase because I do have a melee power and I'll go over it in, in a bit but again you can't replace some of them for something else but I'm just showing you what I what I what I used when I passed constant trial so now let's get into the good stuff let's get into the rotation and show you guys how I was able to pass cosmic trial with human torch with this build for team up I am using sunspot I only chose this. I only chose them because I feel like they kind of are, they're somewhat similar as far as appearance. So I figured why not. So regarding his rotation, how I play with him, it's pretty pretty simple to be completely honest with you. It's not that difficult. Um, just to get it out of the way, um, I use cleansing fire. Um, it's a crowd control, so I activate this whenever I have it. Whenever it's available, I activate it right away. So just okay, get just to get it out of the way. So the way I have it set up here is this. I have Fairy Uppercut, Scorching Pyro, Scattering Blaze, Scorching Wall, Homing Flares, Fury Rejuvenation, and Signature, and then Blazing Charge. Okay. Now, the way I play with him, it's pretty, pretty simple. My main power that I use is Fury Uppercut. That is my main, main power. It's probably one of the, yeah, my main power. And I'm explaining to this right now because, again, this build is pretty simple. It's not that complicating. But I'll explain why I chose these powers and so forth. So, Fire Replica is my main power. But keep in mind certain things. So, this is not known does it do a lot of energy damage. But also, too, your damage is increased by 50% against burning enemies. Okay? Re read it again. Damage is increased by 50% against burning enemies. That's very important. Burning is very important. Okay, so, so let's get into my first rotation. So what I usually do, the way I start off my first rotation is simple. Activate Scorching Power right away. You want to activate this because Scorching Power does not only it, does it do a lot of area damage and it's a range, but also two, it does burning. Okay, and as I mentioned, Fiery Uppercut is my main power. And, if you, and as I mentioned, when you activate Scorching Power, you activate burning, which includes that when you activate fire uppercut, when I start using my main power after I activated pyro, uh, pyro, um, I gain 50% increased damage. See what I mean? So just show you what I mean. So first rotation start off with scorching. So and then just go into it, just like that. Just just activating scorching and using fury you're gaining 50% increase of damage, just like that. So my first rotation is starting it off, it's simple. Activate Scorching, and then go back to Fire Uppercut for about two seconds. Once I use this, then activate Scattering Blaze. 
once I activate scattering place, go back to Fury for about two seconds and then do the wall and go back to Fury and then repeat, which is Scorching, Fury, Scaring Blaze, Fury, it's over. I think you guys are starting to see the pattern here. Um, and I'll explain why I chose these specific powers. And I'll show you why too. So, I already showed you Scorching, why and what it does. Now I'm going to show you why I chose Scattering. I chose Scattering because no one does it do knockback. But also, two, it does damage over time, which, as I mentioned, he is spirit dependent. But also, two, according to Arnim Zola's ESP box, you gain 3.5 spirit when you hit with a damage over time power. Okay? Hence why I'm using Scattered Blaze. But, Scattered Blaze 2, what's great about this is that when you activate it, it goes through the enemy. So, not only does it do damage over time, but it goes through the enemy. So, let's just say, for instance, you have a single target. You're, you're, let's say this is the main target that you want to do damage to. And let's say you're doing Fury, when you activate Scorching Blaze, it will go through that enemy and attack the enemy behind him. Let me just show you what I mean. So I'm going to activate scoring, oh, Scattering Blaze. See that? See, so I still made damage to, the, to this main target that I'm trying to do damage, but also two enemies behind him also get, have damage to them as well too. Hence why I chose this power. Because not only does it do knockback, but also two, it does damage over time. And it does damage to enemies behind that enemy, the target I'm trying to do damage to. See what I mean? Do it again. See that? Okay, just to show you guys. Okay, that's that's why I chose that one. Now, the reason why I chose Wall is because what well, Wall does, this one right here, Scorching Wall, it, it does a little bit of damage over time but also too what this does when you activate it um, enemies deal 10% less damage for about 9 seconds but also too enemy projectiles passing through deal 25% less damage so what does that mean and what what does it mean with my build or my rotation is that when you're doing damage with F fury right you're doing your main damage of fury and when you activate scorching wall it creates a wall and so what it does is when you create the wall enemies that are behind that that are shooting at you let's say they let's say they're doing projectiles with having this wall it you know it produ it reduces the 25 percent damage being dealt to you and as i mentioned his health is low i mean look at his health it's twenty one thousand as well so his health is pretty low so having that wall on your enemy not only does it do damage as well too but it also the enemy deals 10% less damage to you, plus projectiles, meaning enemies behind that wall that are shooting at you or doing damage to you, they do 25% less damage. So it looks something like this. See that, that wall? So if, let's say, there's an enemy here that's shooting at you, you can still do damage to your main target, but also enemies behind, they're shooting, they're passing through that wall, and when they hit you, it's 25% less. So again, it's a, kind of like a win-win. So again, my rotation to start it off, my first rotation is simple. Scorching, then Fairy for two seconds, Scattering Blaze, Fury for two seconds, Wall, Fury again for, for two seconds, and then repeat. That is my first that is my my first rotation. And it's pretty simple, like I said. So I'm gonna show you my rotation how it looks like. like that see that look damage over time now you don't have to do two seconds you can do three seconds maybe even four but I usually just do maybe two to three so if you feel like two seconds is too short maybe do three seconds or maybe four seconds but again the key thing is understanding the my rotation and how I play with them and so forth and why I chose these powers so just to repeat again rotation is pretty simple activate scorching once you activate that two to four seconds with fury then scattering blaze two to four seconds of fury or I mean for uppercut and then the wall two to four seconds and then repeat again that simple now homing flares why is this, why is this on here why do I, I don't use it now before I explain how I use this or why I use it I'm just kind of read to you what a couple things here 
damage is increased by 10% for each damage over time effect applied to the enemy. Again, damage is increased by 10% for each damage over time effect applied to the enemy. Now, I'm repeating that because it's very important. When you activate scorching and then scattering and then scor when you activate scorching pyre place and then wall, you're activating you know these damage over time powers and according to this each one that's effect to an enemy you gain 10 percent increase of damage so combine these three alone that's 30 percent right there increase of damage to homing flares okay hopefully that makes sense just as again when you activate the pirates um, scorching pyre blaze and wall to an enemy when you activate homing flares your, your power is increased by 10% for each one. So these are three. When these three are active, and you activate homing flares, right off the bat you're getting 30% increase of damage just by using homing flares because of these previous damages, these th these previous powers. Excuse me. Now, when do I use homing flares? Pretty simple. As I mentioned, human torch is a bit weak. It's a bit fragile. His defense rating is like a 38% or so. And so he's not that strong, and he has low health. So I only use Homing flares whenever I'm like close to half, but I have whenever I'm like half health, I use homing flares. So what I usually what I do is let's say I'm doing my rotation right and I have these powers activated. What I usually do is kind of go away and just activate homing flares. So I'm, let me just show you what homing flares looks like by itself. So it just, it does range attack, but also do. But the great thing about this is that it does. It automatically does damage to any enemies around. They kind of scatter and they go by itself. So I only activate it whenever I'm low on health. I usually activate it to just kind of step away or go away and just use homing flares from a range. That way I still get that damage increase for these three previous powers, but also two, I'm doing damage from a distance and recovering health at the same time. Once my health is fully recovered, then go back to my first rotation. See what I mean? So I'm going to show you my first rotation, and then we're going to pretend like I'm half health, and I'm going to step away and then use homing flares. So you can see what I mean and how it looks like in terms of, you know, if I would be playing. See, and that's it. That's the only time I use homing flares. Okay, so I wouldn't I wouldn't call it a rotation, but it's just that's when that's the only time I use it. But if I'm fully health and fully spirit, or fully health and somewhat decent spirit, then I'm just using my first rotation. But that's the only time I use homing flares. Just when again, whenever I'm low on health, step away, use homing flares. That way I can recover health. Next is fury rejuvenation. Why I use this? Um, it's pretty simple this out the way but i'll explain what it does too what this does is it it absorbs all flames from burning enemies and it grants you it regenerates you 2000 health and 40 spirit okay and i explain to this because it's important um i only use this i only activate this whenever i'm like think of like a last resort only use this power so if let's just say you're doing lady hydra or red skull i think even in my cosmic trial video if you notice, when I'm fighting Red Skull towards the end, I activate this because I'm low on low in health. I activate that, but keep in mind when you activate this, it re absorbs flames from burning enemies, meaning that any enemies that are burning, it absorbs that burning. It takes it away, and uh, and it's 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 good to know because if let's say you're doing Lady Hydra Red Skull and you use this and you're not doing any damage, that's because of this because this removes this. But I only use this as a last result to get the extra health so I can stay alive. So again, whenever you're about to die and you're like the last result, activate this to observe, absorb, excuse me, burning, but also regenerates health. That's the only time I use this. But majority of the time I use this in med kits, but I've already activated med kit and I'm still losing health and I'm about to die. Just activate this, stay away for like maybe a second or two, use um, homing flares again. That we still do damage from our distance. Once you're back to health, like I say, 80% or maybe 90%, then go back to the first rotation. 
but again I only activate this as like a last resort for health all right then last but not least is the signature when do I incorporate that um, before I explain it just a couple things to know signature what this does is and not only does it do quite a bit of damage to energy energy damage but also to it grants you a buff this buff grants you a move speed of 50% critical and brutal strike chance 20% spirit cost reduction by 50% and it lasts about 10 seconds and I'm and explaining it because this buff is pretty strong and it can help out a lot but a mistake that I used to do is I would just grant this signature and not take effect or full effect of his buff and so my advice is is this before you activate the signature make sure you have either 90% health or full health and or 80% minimum 80% health or more and I'm saying this because when you activate signature again no one does it do energy damage but it gives you that it grants you that buff and so if you, let's just say you're like halfway or maybe a quarter health and you activate a signature, yeah, you gain that signature damage, but you're not taking the full effect of the buff. And so if you have full health, my advice is activate the signature when you have full health. That way when you activate signature, you can utilize the buff effect to full advantage. That way it increases your first rotation, which was again, uppercut so forth so forth so forth does it make sense so I would say before you use signature make sure that you have full health and when you activate signature you know to do do you do energy damage but when you do your first rotation you're doing your first rotation but you're also increasing the damage to the first rotation with this buff effect from the signature see what I mean all right so again I'm explaining to you guys and I'll show you what I mean but you wanna again when you activate signature, try to have full health. That way, when you do your first rotation, you get that extra buff and you take advantage of that buff effect. And the reason why I say you want to help, you want to maintain that full health, and you want to activate signature when you have full health because he is a bit weak. He is a bit, he has low health. So if you have have health, activate signature, and then say the enemy does damage to you, and then you're a quarter, you have to step away, and then you're just kind of that that buff effect is kind of going to waste. So I'm gonna show you what I mean. So I'm gonna do I'm gonna do my first rotation, then activate signature, and then you can continue doing my first rotation. So you can see what I mean. And also too, you'll see here that will show right here. So let's go into it. Usually it's on here, but I didn't show this time. But anyways, um, but yeah, that's how I, I, I would incorporate the signature with the first rotation. It's pretty simple. Make sure that you have full health, and when if you do activate signature, when the buff is effect, just start doing your first rotation. That way, each all these powers can get the full advantage of that buff effect. Okay. Also, two, you can also what you can do is incorporate this buff effect with the ultimate, because this buff effect again increases your critical hit and brutal strike chance. So if you activate signature and then shortly after activate um, activate uh, the ultimate power, you, you're just gonna be stacking a buff as well too. And not only that, this the buff would it also I mean the ultimate grants you another buff too, which is 100% increase against burning enemies, and increases your move speed, and it lasts about 22 seconds. And this is the ultimate. Now it's good to know because again. I'm hoping you guys are seeing like the pattern here. That pa the burning is the key thing with Human Torch. You want to keep your enemies burning. But what you can do is you can even stack the signature buff with the ultimate, and e also too the ultimate grants you even another buff as well too, which again, damage 100% damage against um, burning enemies and move speed and so forth for 22 seconds. So imagine if you incorporate the signature buff with the with human torch human torches ultimate which does massive damage again it's just gonna do is your buffs are gonna stack each other but it's gonna give you 
a lot of damage, a lot of buff, and then when you activate ultimate and start doing your rotation, with ultimate's buff effect and signature, it's just going to do huge, huge, huge damage. But again, the key thing is having the health high and having, preferably having a core that grants you 25% of your health and spirits. So in case, let's say you, you do your first rotation and you activate signature and activate the ultimate and you're doing damage to let's say let's say red skull and let's say he shoots at you and you're like halfway health down or maybe a quarter activate med kit that way you can regenerate 2000 health and that way you can continually still do damage and take effect of those buff effects and then last but not least just to kind of let you guys know blazing charge is a movement but also to regenerate 98 health for each burning enemy hit so, just to show you what I mean, all you have to do is scorching, power, activate it, all you do is burning, all you do is regenerate health. Just letting you guys know, so every time you use this power blazing charge and you pass through an enemy that's burning, you regenerate health. So that's another good way to keep, get the, you know, keep um, regenerating health. And that's it this is my build guide for human torch pretty simple maybe a bit kind of boring but again i use this build for cosmic trial i was able to pass cosmic trial with this build and it's the exact same build so again if you have more than 3000 omegas or 4000 maybe five or six and you use this build i'm pretty sure you'll be able to pass cosmic trial this build is pretty simple it's pretty fun it's kind of strong but again this is just my build guide for human torch uh, and showing you how I, I was able to pass Cosmic Trial with Human Torch. Uh, I know usually, I, I know there's a, there's a reason, the reason why there's a delay for this video to upload is because I've been playing the test center. As some of you may or may not know, um, Marvel Heroes is going to be, they're gonna, they revamped a lot of, of the powers in, in Omega system completely. And so that right now in the test center, you can kind of test out these new changes. For you kind of for you to kind of see and get the feel of how it's going to be like possibly next year or next month i not have to show you when it's going to be released but they are doing drastic 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 changes to the powerpoints and so forth and so hence why there's a delay because yesterday i was instead of making this video i was actually testing out this new this new um, mechanics and so forth and so it is a bit different and so people have been asking me my subscribers have been asking me, am I going to still continue doing videos for Marvel Heroes? I, I, I still am going to be continuing doing Marvel, Hero, Marvel Hero videos. I'm still doing Cosmic Trial videos and build guides. But um, with these new changes, it's going to be a lot of changes. So it's going to take some time for me to kind of adapt and figure out what's a good good amount of um, Omegas. Because um, I don't want to say too much just yet because I'll be making a video soon. Explaining to you some of the changes and kind of going giving you guys my my opinions on it and some pros and cons but just kind of give you guys a little a little insight um the the uniques no longer have power points anymore they they all been removed so again none, none of the uniques give you power points if you didn't know but each one unique gives you some kind of power points meaning like plus three to alt ranks plus three to flame on and so forth so they remove that for all uniques Number two, so there's no power points at all. And uh, the second thing, the, probably the biggest thing, is the Omega system. They completely removed that again. So now it's an Infinity system, so it's different. And then Hero Synergies, I haven't looked into Hero Synergies, but they revamped some of them. I've been, you know, I'm still <clears throat> freaking that out, still playing with it. But hence why there's a delay. So I'll be making a video about the new the new updates and so forth give you guys my thoughts on it explain to you some of the changes and my opinion of it and some pros and cons and yeah so keep an eye out for that okay and yeah this is that that's it this is my build guide for human torch this if this uh hopefully this build guide is very helpful for you guys if you have any questions please leave it in the comment section below any requests for certain heroes or characters please leave it in the comment section below if you want to see more videos of mine, if you want to keep up to date, please do subscribe to my channel. It means a lot to me, but also it does help out the channel a lot. And that's it. Hopefully this is very helpful for you guys. And yeah, on to the next one.